Aloha, you beautiful collectors and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fans. It is the one and only Optobotomus coming at you with another video review. And on today's episode, thanks to the absolutely incredible support of my Optobotomus Plus channel members, specifically Emerald T, we're going to be taking a look at the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie star set from Playmates. Now, recently they've been releasing box sets like this with uh, some of the other releases, like the uh, more vintage looking figures, things of that nature. And none of those really appealed to me. This one, though, I absolutely had to have because I never had the movie star figures when I was a kid. Back 30 years ago, on March 22nd, 1991, The Secret of the Ooze film released, and we got our first movie versions of the Ninja Turtles. We didn't get any movie figures with the original movie, but Playmates rectified that with The Secret of the Ooze, giving us all four of the Turtles and, of course, Super Shredder. And then a year later, to coincide with the third live-action movie, they eventually released a Splinter figure. And what this set does is takes all of those releases, all four of the Turtles, Super Shredder, and, of course, Splinter, and puts it in one box set. And if you paid very close attention to what I just said, at the time of this upload, it is now officially the 30th birthday of the Secret of the Ooze movie. So, happy birthday, Secret of the Ooze. But here for the package, this is absolutely gorgeous. You can see the front section here obviously has the TMNT logo with the movie stars right there. It does say that it includes the uh, six figures, as I talked about, which are inspired by the 1990s movies. So not specifically Secret of the Ooze, but the way that the packaging here is really does make me more lean towards that film release. The reason is because in the first movie, as you remember, their lair was in the sewer and then they found a new one being a abandoned subway station and that's what you have here you can see the package is done up to resemble that subway car thing you got Raphael coming out right there got some really cool art you got some shadows and stuff there the uh, side here you can see you got Leonardo coming out of the back says Broadway and then again you can see the shadow images of the other characters so like there is Raphael, and you can see him sitting right there. On this side, you have Donatello hanging out there. You can kind of see him standing there with his bow staff. So how they design that is really very cool. And then you can see here, you got Donatello, you got some more kind of art done up. And then in the background there, you can see Raph holding a side. This side here has Michelangelo. Don't really see him in any other other ones because it's got to go through all the... Well, I guess you can kind of see Michelangelo like right there with that section so that's that's kind of cool i mean i love that three-dimensional sort of look the package is amazing you take a look at the top and it's done up to look like the top of a subway car the bottom section here just has the tmnt logo and then all the figures that are in it so really very impressive attention to detail here with the package and then you open it up and on the inside are all the figures so first up here we have splinter and then again, like I talked about, it really does seem like it's more designed to resemble the Secret of the Ooze because you got like that Secret of the Ooze sort of thing right there. And then all the images here are from the Secret of the Ooze. Come around to the back, you, you drop it. And then again, this is where things get a little bit confusing because these images here are from the first live action movie. So while uh, this does a nice job of homaging all the movie sort of figures because they all roughly look the same with the inclusion of like the super shredder and the packaging all this stuff, it just seems more like a secret of the ooze sort of focus uh here we have leon or i'm sorry donatello one thing that is different oh the little sticker is kind of coming off one thing that is different is the original movie figures did not come with this uh weapons rack this is something that's carried over from the uh, original vintage figures so there's that. Let's see. Coming out here. I've already taken these out and I put them back in. Here we have uh, Michelangelo again. Absolutely gorgeous. The, the box art and everything is the same on all of them. You do have a slightly different... Oh, no. That's all the same read up uh, as well there. So, in, in terms of the packaging, that it, it's all the same. So, I'm trying to get all these 
uh, properly shown here. So you got Mikey, their Super Shredder. That's another one that I didn't have as a kid. Absolutely love having Super Shredder finally in my collection. Um, and then let's see, here is Raphael. And finally, the leader of the outfit, none other than Leonardo. So you got all six of these figures. Uh, I, I mean, I absolutely love it. Like I said, I never had these ones as kids. Uh, and they are all new sculpts. or Well, they were new sculpts back in the day. The only one that really didn't get a dramatic change is Splinter. The only thing that's really all that different is uh, his coloring, his robe color. Uh, the, the vintage one, I think, had an actual rope belt that held everything on there. Now they just use the uh, vintage one again to kind of put that on there. So there is uh, the packaging on all of these. I keep hitting my camera and I, I apologize. So I, I really hate to have to do this uh, because I love the packaging so much, but I will more than likely find another set to get just so I can keep them all mint in package. But I'm opening these guys. I, I, I absolutely have to. So without further ado, let's get these guys out here and see how cool they actually are. All right, guys, so here we have the new reissue movie star figures from Playmates opened up and out of their packaging. And first off, I want to give a shout out to fellow YouTuber Geek Dad Life, who did a fantastic video comparing these new releases to the original ones released back in the day. As I said, I never had these, so there wasn't a lot of memory on my part on how they originally were. So I actually went and uh, searched for reviews on this set and I found his and it was absolutely fantastic. Very well produced, well edited, overall a very good look comparing the two different versions. And I gotta be honest, he, he kind of ruined these a little bit for me. Now, I'm still very grateful and excited to have these finally in my collection. And he made the recommendation that if you wanna get these, you might as well just get the original ones. The problem that I have with that statement is the original ones in terms of carded figures usually run about $100 on average per figure. This set here is less than $50. It's like $45 and then tax and all that. So it's not bad for what you're paying, but compared to those original ones, these are definitely regressed versions of those original pieces. Starting off first with all of their weapons. Other than Super Shredder, all of the weapons that you see here are weapons that were originally released with the, the 80s Turtles. So you can see, like, for example, Donatello, you do have the nice little weapons rack and they're all attached to it and everything. But you got his bows, uh, you got Raphael with his size on here. A lot of the other weapons are basically the same, like the throwing stars and stuff. Here's Leonardo's with his uh, katanas, and then obviously Michelangelo and his nunchucks. Uh, these weapons are also the exact same for Splinter. The thing is, when they did these, all of them came with new weapons. Obviously, they came with the main ones, like the bow, the sai, nunchucks, all that kind of stuff. But there was a lot of other additional accessories that are not being included with this. They're literally just reissuing those same weapons that we got for the 80s Turtles with these guys. Which I I I have to agree with Geek Dad Life. That that's definitely a disappointment. Now, obviously, the main ones are still here, but it, it's they were just much better with, with the original release. Uh, even when it comes to Splinter, because I mean he he comes with his uh, bow and arrow, uh, comes with his little cane and everything. He came with ones that were like that in the original movie star line. But he also came like a backpack with quivers and or a quiver of arrows and such. So you can have him wear that. Came with this. Obviously, he came with his walking stick and everything, but it was a little bit better looking. The other thing is that literally all Playmates did with this release was repaint that original 80s Splinter. The movie star line gave us new sculpts with all of the characters, including Splinter. Um, so it's really unfortunate that they didn't go with that actual movie Splinter one. And this, 
you know, it's not bad, uh, but when you compare it to that original one, which there was, there's two different versions. One of them was actually flocked, and another one just had, like, paint and everything, but it was, it was a completely different sculpt. I mean, even the tail was really cool looking. Uh, this is just a lighter paint. You got a lighter color for his robes and everything, and then, like I said before, they just have that rubber little belt thing right there. Literally, it's the exact same figure, other than the paint detail on it and that's a definite disappointment uh when you compare it and, and again i really i i gotta be honest i honestly didn't know there was that much of a difference because i was not aware how the original figures were uh but watching that uh, geek dad life review really showcased that and definitely does make me a little bit disappointed in this guy i i really don't know if i'm going to ultimately display him in my collection just because he doesn't stand out. Uh, he doesn't impress me really all that much now. Uh, articulation is all the exact same. So you got the swivel uh, for the uh, the neck, the shoulders. You have a swivel up at the uh, arm. It, it, I mean, he brought up that. Uh, it is kind of weird that they painted the upper part of his arm and then they stopped there. So, I mean, I guess it's kind of covered by the sleeves and everything, but that's just still kind of weird. And then even when you look at the tail, it's like you, you got brown and then this is all gray, which that should be brown, but it was all gray on the vint or on the, I shouldn't say vintage one, but the original movie star one. So again, just reusing it and then painting it still doesn't really work all that well and then you got the exact same feet uh you got some straps down here that are painted flesh color uh that should match with the straps that go up there but they don't so yeah this, this is definitely a, a disappointment of sorts uh the other thing is while they kind of look like the original movie star figures primarily in the uh, head sculpts the colors are much much lighter on these again initially it didn't bother me but then seeing the original ones it did kind of put me off i'm still not too terribly upset about it but one thing that they also did change is that all the original ones did have individually sculpted pieces these are all the exact same with the exception of the head and the different uh strats for the weapons the arms are all the same sculpt the legs are the same sculpt and the bodies are the exact same even the shell which is all kind of one piece they still look good though and they all had goofy looks on their face like donatello here they do have spots which was something that was some something of a controversy uh because at, at first I, I mean i remember the original movie star figures I was like why do those have spots the actual movie had them not nearly as noticeable as these. Uh, I mean, th this just kind of looks like they got some weird kind of uh, chicken pock sort of virus all over them. But again, if you were going for a movie look, uh, I probably would have liked it more if the elbow pads, the, the wrist straps and the uh, knee pads were just done in like a, a brown plastic or brown paint or something and then just have the the proper coloring for the mask that would have given a little bit i i guess more movie look uh but you do have ball joints pretty much all over the place these are kind of locked in i uh, i mean they can pop out but you can see the the neck is really long on it so while yes it's a ball joint really you're not getting much forward and back it's primarily just a left and right motion with them uh, the arms, though, at the shoulders are on a better ball joint sort of system. And these are really very gummy. Uh, I don't know how the original ones were, but these are very, very soft. And, well, not, not necessarily a bad thing. It is worth noting, at least. And you can see they're all kind of sculpted in a way that make it look like Donatello is able to hold his bow staff pretty decently. So there's all that. So you got the ball joint up there. I don't know... I thought maybe there were cuts on the original ones that allowed you to rotate the arm, but it doesn't seem like that's the case here. Uh, that's all just one sculpted piece. And then the legs, again, you have ball joints up there, so you can move that around. You got peg holes on the bottom, so if you wanted to, you know, do something. I mean, they, they stand perfectly fine uh, without a peg hole, so I don't know why you would necessarily need that, but it is what it is. Uh, and then taking a look at Raphael. Uh, now, his uh, belt thing here is a little bit loose. You can see it kind of falls down fairly easy unless you really push it up there. Donatello and Leonardo don't really have that problem because you have that strap that goes over their shoulder, but 
both Raphael and Mikey uh, have a looser one. So that tends to slide down a little bit easier. All you have to do is like kind of push it up around the fatter part of the shell. But again, uh, same basic thing. His, he's got a little bit more uh, ball joint motion there. But again, the arms are the same. He definitely has one of the more uh, noticeable color differences. Like I said, all of them seem to be lighter of a color. And honest, I, I keep saying that, but I probably wouldn't have noticed it if it wasn't for that other video that I watched. Uh, and, you know, consequently made me kind of like, hmm, that is kind of interesting. But uh, he had a darker element to him, which did look really good. Again, uh, all the articulation is the same. His spots are... Uh, a little bit different. That's one thing that's different. Also, uh, in, in terms of the uh, the paint applications on them, uh, you can see like the <laughs> Donnie's got like all these yellow and black dots throughout his whole thing. Uh, Raf's are a little bit more white and black. <laughs> that just looks really weird with the yellow. Uh, but they're all in, in kind of different positions and such. So that again differentiates them a little bit. Coming on to Leonardo, uh, again, uh, his belt works a little bit better because you have that higher strap section up there, but uh, it does tend to droop here in the back because it's not connected anywhere, really. Uh, well, no, I guess it kind of is. It just sits really low on him. He's got this big, goofy grin. I, I don't understand that. Uh, he does have a little bit more of a ball-jointed sort of motion there with the head. Again, the yellow and black just stand out the coloring is a little bit different but uh, sculpt is the same articulation is all the same i'm still in general fairly happy with them mikey definitely i think is another one that really has suffered from the lighter color being applied to him i think that the head sculpt looks really good though really did a good job of capturing that movie look uh, but then again, you, you got the belt section right here. I always hated, and that was one thing that uh, was touched on in the Geek Dad Life video, that these absolutely make me nervous, kind of bending them so he can hold them. They always have. I'm not, not a big fan of them. The original ones, though, seem to do a better job with that. And again, that's definitely a downgrade in terms of taking those weapons away from these releases you know i mean maybe not give us that guy and give us more accurate weapons but for me uh, honestly the star is going to be super shredder this guy didn't really change too much from that uh, vintage release and again i never had that vintage one this is the first one that i've ever had so I'm very happy to uh, finally have one. Uh, the, the belt is a little bit looser on this guy as well. Now, the nice thing is he does come with all the weapons that he came with originally. So you got this kind of mace sort of thing here. And then very much looks like that uh, communicator that they use to talk uh, back. Well, when Shredder would be talking to Krang in the uh, cartoon series, very much looks like that. And then he does come with two... Uh, just molded canisters of ooze. I uh, really would have liked it if they put a sticker or something on there just to kind of make it look like there was ooze in there. But this is this is the figure that's uh, a standout for me. The colors look really good. Uh, it, it's almost an exact recreation of that original release all the way down to the weapons. Real nice silver detail in the ridges of his mask. You got the, the gummy plastic here for his uh, shoulder weapon things that just uh, attach to his boob so that's where they sit now nice detail on the side section right there you got the huge spikes on his uh, forearms there huge spikes on his shins nice purple uh there was a, a mail away version and that's what NECA uh, recreated recently with a uh, Walmart exclusive they did the super shredder figure and then they did a mail away version that is the same figure but it's a darker color which uh, it, it kind of makes more sense because in the movie, he was very darkly lit. So he looked a lot darker than he actually was. So NECA, much like Playmates, released the variant of their Super Shredder to kind of homage that. Uh, it would have been nice maybe if we would have got that um, instead of this. But I, I'm still perfectly okay with getting... This guy, Kevin Nash, never looked so good. Uh, his articulation, again, everything is on here is very, in terms of the arms and such, very gummy. Uh, the head, same, very soft and rubbery. Uh, but you have a swivel right there. You have a swivel at the arm. Not a ball joint like the rest of them, but you do have the r rotation there at the uh, lower section of his arm. So that's really nice. No waist or anything. And then you do have ball joints down here for the hips. So 
standard kind of articulation for a uh, Ninja Turtle figure. In general, uh, you know, there, there are some parts that I'm disappointed in. Uh, but ultimately, I am still happy to get this. Because like I said, all six of these figures, it was about $45, $50. And at that price, I think this is worth it. Considering, like I said, to get all of them, you're looking at about $600 if you wanted to go the vintage route. And I mean, even the, the vintage, I, I, I say vintage, but I mean the original movie star versions. Uh, if you went with that original movie star version of Splinter, you're going to get a better version than this one. So that might end up even costing more. But uh, so, I mean, there's some definite weaknesses to this overall set, but I'm still generally fairly happy with it based on the price paid for it now the biggest problem is that these are target exclusives and they will be slightly harder to find because scalpers seem to know that ninja turtle fans will buy up anything and everything when they're uh, kind of released and scalpers go out they find them in the stores and they turn around and sell them for two and three times the price um so if you can find these in a store or even online at Target.com, which seems to be doing a pretty good job right now of keeping them available. You might have a hard time finding them in stores, but online it seems a little bit easier. I would pick them up just for the nostalgia sake. Obviously, if you want the best representations of them, you're going to want to go with the original 1990s release. Or if you, if you want to go even further and say if you want the most accurate movie Ninja Turtle figures, you're going to go with NECA. But these are special. Uh, the packaging, I think, is fantastic. Both the outer box as well as the cards for these. The figures, for the most part, with the exception of this guy, do a good job of homaging those original movie stars. And for me personally, having never owned these style Ninja Turtle figures, I'm thrilled. I, I really, really am. All that being said, as I mentioned, they are available right now at Target. So if you are looking for them, good luck to you guys and happy hunting. But beyond that, that's about it. Once again, I got to send a huge shout out to all of you guys who watch my videos. If you would do one quick thing for me, I'd really appreciate it. And all that is, is just hitting that thumbs up button. That one very small gesture really does go a long way towards helping me out, and I'd really appreciate it. Also, I got to send a huge shout out to all of my Optibotomist Plus channel members, especially Emerald T, who through all of their continued support, now more than ever, help to make reviews like this possible. And if you like information on how you can help support my channel by becoming a channel member, where you can get custom channel chat and comment emojis, loyalty badges, early access to my video reviews, exclusive unboxing videos, live streams, Zoom calls, as well as the occasional giveaways like these guys do, then consider becoming a member of Optibotomous Plus. And for that, all you have to do is click on that little join button right down there. And finally, remember that the real trouble with the world is that too many people grow up. Thank you for watching and taking the time to be a kid.